Materials supplied by Microsoft Corporation may be used for internal review, analysis, or research only. Any editing, reproduction, publication, rebroadcast, public showing, internet or public display is forbidden and may violate copyright law. After the um, such the, you know, the initial question, they actually start you know the collection of data. So those are textual data, and then after that, the, uh, they um, based on those the, uh, the essential question, they uh, build up some uh, fishing start to build up some uh, initial uh, hypothesis about the disease. You know what they look like. Okay, then they uh, they may ask for the, some uh, some more questions related to you know the past medical history uh, and also any family or social history uh, about the and also a uh, review of the, um, the uh, system of the patient. Okay, then after the, the, um, the second iteration, they basically they can um, uh, make a refinement of the hypothesis and then to, um, so basically just try to give the, try to keep a conclusion of what kind of, you know, the disease uh, the patient does. And uh, if the, um, the uh, that refinement is given not um, solve our problem, then basically, you know, the uh, physician will ask the, uh, uh, the uh, patient to uh, make some uh, physical examination or make the uh, laboratory testing, for example, the blood testing or any other biopsy uh, testing. And the, and also uh, traditional like the ECG or EEG, that's one dimensional um, the, the data they uh, collect. And uh, particularly, you know, the, uh, uh, they also uh, make, use, make use of the, uh, the imaging study, uh, in image examination, for example, X-ray or uh, the CT or MRI. So that's the, um, the, after those, the, um, the data correction, okay, we basically get the uh, 1D and 2D or 3D, you know, the image component. And then the, um, based on that, they can um, start to uh, um, the, um, define the, uh, the most likely, you know, the diagnostics. Okay, then the, uh, based on that diagnosis, they start to, um, to treat patient, the accordingly, okay. Then the, after that, they uh, um, also make the observation of the uh, result of the first treatment by you know the um, the physical examination again, or you know making the uh, imaging uh, scan again to see you know what's going on before and after the treatment, and for some of um, the clinical disease, um, such kind of iteration may um, need to look for a couple of times in order to you know the uh, get those the um, the, the final hypothesis. Okay, and the, for certain uh, range of the observation, then the patient may are uh, getting better and no further care required. So um, um, the case is over. And all the patients will be died, you know, the, for some serious problem. Okay, so that's the um, the, the whole, you know, the processing about the, um, you know, the uh, in the in the uh, clinical routine and uh, how we collect the uh, uh, the biomedical data um, and also make the certain integration. Okay, and uh, and for this the um, the processing it may you know it happen for uh, one patient for um, the many times, you know, even for the lifetime, for example, the. Uh, they will visit again and then make a, a, a further, further testing. And it also um, applies for, you know, the, uh, for different patients, they have the same problem. 
So that brings a lot of the, you know, the, um, uh, the data set which allow the physician to, um, the, uh, to make the comparison. Okay, so in that case, you know, the, um, uh, we say, you know, the, for those, the, um, the, the biomedical data collection, uh, uh, particularly, you know, the image study, um, they generate a lot of the, um, the huge amount of the, um, the data in 2D, 3D, and even 4D, including time domain. Okay, so we say the, um, those the, uh, image the, um, study actually provide the uh, really crucial um, the, um, the role for um, you know, the uh, healthy physician to um, actually see through the body and then try to uh, find out any, any um, abnormality inside the human body. So we say the, uh, it, it brings the, uh, lots of the, you know, the, uh, the um, sort of some problems which, which is the, uh, cannot be solved by traditional um, you know, the medicine. Okay, so the um, for those you know the um, the clinical routine you can see um, they generate lots of the um, the biomedical um, imaging data, and then the for those data in a recent study show the um, those the um, the biomedical large scale biomedical imaging data actually um, has has reached um, the thirty percent of the overall worldwide data storage in the two thousand year two thousand ten, and also nine percent of current data are actually. Um, actually, was to create in the last two years. So that means you know the increase really um, the I'm uh, showing the uh, the massive the, um, the, the, the uh, amount of data, and also those data are really contradict the uh, for example the um, uh, we're talking about those data are normally just um, uh, you know they form they can they can be from the um, um, capture the small size of the uh, like the protein and then the um, the cell and the tissues and then the um, Organ, different organ system and even the whole body. Okay, and from time scale point of view, um, we can capture using the event image capture the uh, the biomedical reaction you know, in a very short time, and or you know we can um, humanize and capture all those you know the human um, uh, human body change the um, the around the lifetime. Okay, and here the uh, where we receive we got a very powerful you know the um, the um, uh, biomedical uh, the imaging. It also you know, bring the, uh, the massive the, uh, the data um, data set, and uh, that is the future. The um, first of all, you know, the really increase the the, num the total number of the clinical examination that are performed every day in hospital, and also you know we use the right range of the, uh, the image modality for uh, different organ study, and I'll show some example later. And also, and the uh, those in medical modality actually bring the uh, uh, you know the. Uh, Create lots of the, uh, the high uh, spatial and temporal resolution, so it provides even larger data set. And uh, and for those the medical uh, biomedical imaging, you can see the, they also uh, generate the, uh, lot, the ability to uh, integrate the uh, different uh, this, the structure, uh, the component, and the biochemical and the phys physiology, and then the genetic the uh, information. And uh, also, you know, the uh, for the recent year, the, we have uh, the, the personalized medicine. That means that we not only generate the, uh, the, uh, the critical data from related to the clinical, um, those uh, you know, the clinical um, the questions, but also um, relate to other uh, patients' health. So we want to monitor the, you know, the whole, you know, the uh, the, the, the process of the, uh, the around the uh, lifetime, and also. Um, we also have uh, we call the uh, defensive uh, medicine. That means if you have enough pocket money, you can you know make your, uh, the actual imaging scanning. Uh, that's that's called just in, just in case. You know. And uh, so um, for those the um, the uh, reason, then we have a uh, you know large scale the the, the, uh, the biomedical data. And here are some examples showing the um, biomedical imaging data uh, in the general in our clinical routine and. Uh, on the left hand side, you can see those are traditional X ray images showing the 2D image, but of, of course, you know, all those the, uh, different organs are you know, being uh, pressed together, so you cannot see any, um, you know, the, the 3D contents. And the bottom left here is showing the, um, we use the temperature as a as this, uh, features to, you know, the uh, measure of any uh, abnormality inside uh, the, in the, 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 um, the human body. And uh, we also have like the, uh, the MRI showing the 3D, 3D um, the, the uh, 3D components of the of the, of the human brain, and uh, that's about it. This one showing the uh, the whole body, um, the 
cancer emission and then show the spread of the, uh, the cancer in different uh, the, the, the human uh, the organ system. And the right hand side here, um, this, the bottom right here, showing the show the um, uh, we combine also can combine the different modalities together to provide the, not only the structural information but also functional information together. Okay, and uh, so for the uh, particularly for the functional image like the uh, progenome image, image topography, uh, we can uh, make that injection made of the uh, those traces to the human body and then try to uh, the extract some of uh, the biochemical um, the changes. For example, the metabolic of glucose um, inside the human body and to detect you know, the um, what's going on for the those tumor uh, the um, regions you know the how active those the uh, metabolic of glucose. And through the uh, the tracer kind of modeling, um, which is allow you to um, generate some uh, parametric imaging and provide some uh, functional um, the changes. So instead of traditional, you know, we only uh, can get those structural information. Okay, and we can use this the functional image to um, the um, capture you know the different organ um, the, the the functional change in the different organ system like the brain and the lung and then the uh, the heart and the uh, kidney. Okay, and uh, from the uh, the previous example, we can see the um, the functional image actually provide the um, the um, the quantitative you know the results about the um, uh, the human um, the functional change. However, you know the resolution is not that high because of the uh, due to those the tracer you know the reconstruction of those tracer image. So uh, in that case, you know the uh, we start to uh, you know to have uh, introduce the combined of the uh, the PET and CT uh, the imaging model together. That means you know the where you take the, those functional changes a uh, with low resolution, you also can take the uh, um, a combined with the detailed structure of um, the and then to have a better location of those the functional changes. So here showing the uh, the left hand side here. Left hand side here showing the um, the pad, uh, the functional changes image, and then the for the middle side showing the um, the structure uh, detail from the CT, and then the this the uh, the, the combined image here showing the um, those the um, you can detect the find out those the precisely uh, the uh, make the location of those the uh, abnormal changes. Okay, and for those the um, large scale the uh, data, for, particularly for this whole body image I showed before, and the uh, they normally you know they involve the the um, the hundreds you know several hundreds of um, the uh, the slides the uh, for the for the whole body, and uh, uh, normally it's the uh, we we store the such kind of the large scale data in the uh, patient archive and communication system, the PEC system in hospital, or uh, you can uh, store in the uh, vendor neutral uh, archiving which is you know the provide more flexible way for uh, for you to embed any uh, the imaging uh, the processing technique. Okay. And for those large data set um the uh, you can see the uh, for the physician you know normally it takes a um, long time for them for so they need to load the, the whole data set, you know, the whole body data set and then after that they need to carry select the transactional view and surgical view and the coronal view in order to you know to identify the uh, uh, to report those the um, the abnormal um, region, so they call ROI or the or voxel for the interest, and then after that they need to manually mark it and then the make the um, the um, the, um, the technical uh, the clinical report together, and uh, it takes a long time for for one um, this the whole body case. Okay, so for this the uh, we really looking for you know the uh, find a better way to make a, you know the interpretation good interpretation for those. So um, then the um, so the many uh, you know the um, the uh, research actually uh, work on you know providing trying to develop the uh, the effective intelligent analysis of those large scale the biological image data and uh, here particularly I would like to mention the the um, the the two um, the the image to be yeah. well the first one is the, um, the Microsoft the Kodak Black um, as actually mentioned as mentioned in the, um, uh, Wednesday is the um, the uh, keynote speak by the Simon. Um, the this code lab actually is the open source open source platform for uh, the making the biomedical imaging analysis. So you can allow you to upload the the large scale data set and then make your 
make a competition and compare with the other um, the um, the, uh, the biomedical imaging data analysis algorithm. And the another one is the uh, project called the Vasera uh, project. Uh, it's funded by the, um, the the EU, and uh, its full name is called the Visual Concept um, Extraction Challenge in Radiology. And the uh, idea for this is the project is the um, they propose two um, challenges. They um, I'll try to sort of the large scale image data analysis program, and then particularly focus two um, of the challenge. The first one is about the uh, anatomic uh, detection. So uh, they want to uh, the um, competition about the um, generate automatic generate the anatomic detection, and then to provide the um, the the, um, the the CAD computer aspect diagnosis for the acquisition. And the second, the uh, the challenge is about the uh, the trio of the similar case, and this was called the common back medical imaging trio. And it provides the 10 to 40 t TB data, allow the um, research to uh, make those the, on the trial and then the, and the competition. Okay. And uh, for this, the investor, uh, the, um, the, uh, the project, uh, the, the, the current infrastructure for this, the, uh, for those, the, uh, the, the, the benchmark is supported by the Microsoft Research on the Microsoft Azure. Okay, so the um, so the uh, uh, today I would like to just focus on the uh, the retrieval similar case. You know, the, uh, so that's the actually is about in the uh, normal uh, and general image we call the common base image retrieval. So the um, so the for the large scale medical image data analysis, the uh, one the the, um, the crucial um, the the um, the scenario is the when a physician you know, try to make a diagnosis based on the uh, patient's image scan. Um, the you know the large data set the, for the previous case. The physician can actually want to uh, choose and browse the the same similar case. The um, the uh, compare with the, the current case, which is the uh, patient uh, uh, the, to be uh, treated, and then the database. And then we use the use the, those similar image as a as a reference set. And then we try to for the physician they can make sure you know the correct analysis of the uh, pathology can, can be done. Okay, so that's the. Um, um, a broader idea for you know like the um, you have a large data uh, the image data set and the uh, for the offline you basically extract the those the, um, the key features and then but and for the new um, the the current image and then you get the kind of the, uh, the new features as well then make a comparison and then find out some uh, similarity um, results. Okay, so the, uh, the ability to find the the images with similar contents and then and, and also search for the relevant case actually you know the is important role for um, you know the case-based reasoning and the evidence-based medical support, med medicine support. Okay. And for this topic, um, the in recent year, uh, Mikai um, actually run a couple of the uh, the workshops. That's called multi uh, medical uh, the common bias retrieval for clinical decision support, and uh, um, try to you know the sort of this and, and help do the help for the those the large scale biomedical image data um, analysis and the retrieval. Okay, and uh, for the um, the um, machine point of view, um, the um, they really want to make use of the such kind of the biomedical imaging um, the analysis technique to to find out the similar pathological uh, characteristics rather than just overall you know image appearance like the normal uh, general image. So uh, basically, idea is they want to uh, you know they retrieve the uh, those image with the similar spectral contents. And those contests actually are uh, 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 closely related to the pathological areas the, uh, and the surrounding anatomic structure. And, uh, and uh, it can provide the uh, second opinion for physician to uh, use medical imaging um, the, from previous the, uh, patients the, as reference guides and then to balance the, the current patient with the trick. And uh, also, not only that, we can also use this the, uh, the ritual technique to analyze that technique to uh, to create, to generate some, <coughs> find out some patterns, the uh, DC patterns, together with the you know some other no image the uh, no image the uh, the information, for example, uh, the genes for, uh, information from the uh, just like the professor Wang the, uh, uh, the the previous the um, talk. Okay, and here I'd like to just show you the uh, the case study for the um, psoriatic the image and with PCT. Okay, so the um, so for the um, the passive image is the, the best image the uh, technique for um, the lung cancer uh, diagnosis and uh, and we know the lung cancer is the uh, the 
the leading cause for the cancer related death. Okay, and especially for non-small cell uh, lung cancer, and the COC is the, uh, the the most common subtype. And uh, here, you know, we want to uh, make the uh, the the those the uh, the intelligent analysis of those the uh, the this really an uh, overall imaging, particularly for the lung cancer imaging, and then try to uh, to find out the uh, the tumors and nodules, and also the the patterns of the distribution of the the, the spread of those the, uh, the cancers okay, to other the organs. Okay, and for the um, the those the um, the the um, the special context of the tumor, you can see um, here is the uh, the four data sets uh, to the left and. Uh, the most left column here um, show the um, actually the lung can the, 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 the cancer you know the close to the mediastinum and the second one actually is the lung cancer um, um, the close to the mediastinum but the um, 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 well within the uh, the lung field and the third one showing the the, uh, the cancer actually just the um, have no touch with the mediastinum and also the, um, the the chest wall and the last one actually showing the, the cancer. Uh, actually, can touch the um, the adjacent is the in the chest wall, and all those you know these uh, special context information actually is quite related to uh, what we call the lung cancer staging, and then also uh, provide the uh, useful information for um, uh, the, the treatment. And uh, funny, um, the the retrieval, um, the the large scale need to have a retrieval, and the basic idea is we need to first we need to have a have a good feature extraction. And uh, for feature extraction, um, in order to um, to capture those special, you know, the and context information uh, related to the pathological uh, structure, then here we uh, make use of the uh, special feature encoding. And normally, um, people use the um, the ROI detection, regional entry detection, um, and also called the region classification, or use the BOF monitoring, and or the use SPN method. And uh, for the um, the um, the special feature encoding uh, using the uh, region classification. Um, although you know it provide really a uh, straightforward you know the uh, making those the um, the first of all you need to make those the uh, the lung um, the um, the different regions for example the lung um, field and the mediastinum and then the lymph lymph node and the tumor and the tumor boundary um, to the um, uh, allow you to make those the, uh, the further you know the uh, the learning and the protein to. Um, generate the those the, um, the special features the encoding. However, it's quite sensitive for the classification that result. And the second approach, BOF, actually um, allow you to you know they don't require any uh, accurate classification, but they, they um, normally um, introduce the um, uh, the local area you know the um, uh, subdivide into the um, square um, the grid structure. And then for this, then because it's to um, provide a fixed grid structure, so it cannot bring the uh, you know the uh, precisely uh, the um, uh, represent those features the, of the uh, pathological uh, results, and the third one is the end try to you know the bring more flexible way to provide a subdivision the of those the um, the feature combine those features this one um, for the different uh, the scale of the subdivision, but the uh, still you know it's not uh, because of those the uh, there's a two um, the bridges for those the um, the, the subdivision, so. Um, you know, recent study will provide the hierarchical, um, the contextual, special descriptor, and uh, the main idea for this is we try to um, uh, make use of the uh, the flexible, um, what we call the adaptive, the um, radio equation for the uh, the subdivision of those the, uh, the feature, um, the, those the, uh, the, uh, the special feature coding, and also um, we don't require any this method doesn't doesn't require any um, the. A classification and, and also the segmentation. So basically, we um, just use the, uh, need to detect the pathological central and then use this central to uh, to build up those the, uh, the the subdivision. And then we can use the uh, retrieval random based the uh, similar approach to um, the cooperate those the, the better uh, the retrieval performance. And here are the, um, the three um, the major steps: the, uh, the local feature extraction and the special feature representation. Particularly, you know, the, we um, let's build up the um, the uh, the framework called the pathological central detection and a context-based uh, traditional modeling. And the last step is about uh, similar measurement and ranking. Okay. So the, for the for the local feature extraction, uh, the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 
Og det er jo noget, der er mange af de fine fysiske perfektioner, der er rigtig godt for de bedre fysiske, 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 der The central of the you know the central point of this the addition, and then based on that uh, we can use NSDR to make those the uh, uh, the those the, uh, the detection. And after that uh, we can make use of the uh, what we call the hierarchical uh, set of the structure. And for that you know we provide the multi layer and then the subdivision. And though for those the uh, the subdivision we actually provide the uh, the adaptive way to you know to make a. Uh, uh, by the making of optimization to um, make sure you know the the most of the um, those the, uh, the contact chip base the um, the abnormal feature can be can be um, included. Okay, and we also particularly take care of the uh, the, um, the those the um, the subdivision by um, re the adaptive review subdivision, and also um, the. Based on those the other uh, lung cancer, uh, the those lung region, we um, also propose the uh, the feature components using the what we call the median arterials and material and posterior of the order. So make sure you know the uh, it's not like the standard subdivision. You have all like the crosswise and the or uh, crosswise or the anti crosswise the uh, the order. So basically you need to check the median uh, section and arterial section and arterial section is the and posterior section as well. Um, based on this, the, the center point and the pastoral uh, point of the point now. Okay, and the, the last stage is about the, we use the uh, triple, um, the learning technique, the uh, uh, training technique to uh, make those uh, optimization of the measurement. Okay, and we compare with the, uh, the approach with the other, you know, the state of us, the approach that the SPM, um, the local features and OPOF shift uh, approach. And we um, the, the, the overall performance the, you know, is very we can get a very really good result and uh, we also check with the uh, the physician in our local hospital and they're also pretty happy with the the kind of performance and here are some results showing the um, the the true output so the for the for, for the first one the first the um, row here you can see the most left hand side image showing the uh, the prior image the current image uh, the physician try to looking for any similar case you know the in the database. And then you can see the right hand side three are the most the top of um, the, the the searching result. You can see the you know no matter how scale the, the, the how the uh, the different scale the patient presents and uh, you can see the we can find out the, the first case is about looking for all the tumor region showing the hot red area, um, the actually uh, adjacent with the uh, middle stadium, which is the middle side of the, the uh, between two lung uh, field. And you can see the right hand side, the three case, you know, uh, you all can see that those the um, the similar case uh, with the uh, from um, um, in line with the the um, the regarding the the um, contextual on the future point of view, and you can see no matter is the left um, it, it located the near the left the uh, lung field or the right lung field, they all can capture that. So it's impossible to use the you know traditional you know the image appearance to find it out. And for the second row here showing the, um, the, the, the the tumor region is close to, you know, still sitting in the lung field, but close to the middle stadium. And the third one is the uh, final order, uh, similar case, you know, you have a tumor region actually uh, in touch with the, um, the the chest wall. And the last one, which is the most, uh, you know, the the the, uh, the early stage of the uh, tumor, it shows the, uh, the tumor sit, uh, fully sitting inside the lung, uh, Few instead of getting in touch with the chest wall and or the uh, stadium. Okay, and then you know based on this you know the preliminary study, um, we have discussed with the our physician in the uh, the our current hospital, and uh, uh, we actually can you know get further to um, not only just the find out the similar case, but for those similar case we actually already get a lot of you know the uh, really uh, variable those features. Uh, the content and for those the uh, metadata we actually can uh, get further to uh, to help making the, uh, the what we call the computer aggregate lung cancer staging and here I'm uh, showing the, uh, the different the lung 
cancer staging by staging 1A and 1B and 2A, 2B and 3A, 3B and uh, uh, stage 4. And the bottom line also showing the this five years of survival rate, you know, the from 67 to you know the one percent. So showing the uh, uh, different uh, the stage of the uh, the lung cancer. And for this, you know, the um, we can build up the uh, 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 also um, make use of those the uh, other features and those methods to uh, make the uh, the temporal changing uh, analysis for um, the patient being before treatment and after treatment. For example, in this case, the most left hand side show the um, patient get, get the you know the couple of the um, the, the lung um, the tumor region, and then after the right hand side Q two, Q three, Q four, actually showing the after treatment, and we can see those the uh, region uh, uh, the cancer region of this area. Then we can um, um, by checking those temporal changes to um, to make an analysis of the you know the how how the is the evolution of those the uh, the, the, the treatment result. And we also can uh, extend it to the whole body uh, PET CT imaging data analysis. And here the idea is that, um, uh, for those we can make a further analysis of those the, uh, the tumor uh, spread to the whole body uh, in a, from the lung to the other uh, the organ system. Okay, and then to um, to provide the, uh, the useful information for any uh, further treatment. And. Uh, um, Based on those the, um, the, the, the whole body, you know, the, the data analysis result, and we can um, also make the abstract of those the, and the graph, you know, using the graph model to um, try to find out some, you know, the uh, evolution patterns for um, like what we call the DC map. And of course, the, for this DC map, we also need to um, uh, combine with the, the other, you know, the metadata from the um, no image, uh, the, the, um, the, the information, no, <coughs> for example, <coughs> like the, um, uh, Professor Huang uh, uh, mentioned before, you know, those the um, gene information. Okay, and we also uh, make use of those the, uh, the context the modeling to uh, build up the, uh, the spatial and temporal um, the uh, information uh, related to the, uh, the for the for the personal um, the health record, and uh, it actually give the we also call the um, the the the, um, the graph based the avatar, and that basically you know they provide the um, the um, the different uh, the staging of the, the human, you know, the uh, related the, the, the individual related the um, the um, all those the, uh, the health record. Left hand side is about the that's the that's the simulation one, you know, using Zuga front end and uh, because for this at the point uh, here there's not any uh, imaging map I never imaging extract from the, the hospital scanner. But for the right hand side here we can see um uh, you can actually find out the those the endoscopy from those the whole body contents. And the most right hand side um, image and the diagram showing the you know the results. Okay. And the last slides and uh, we also um the work on the uh, some not only just the whole body uh, the image, we also uh, particularly work on neural image data analysis for early diagnosis of the Alzheimer's disease and uh, Try to find out some, you know, the um, useful patterns for, you know, the different staging of the um, the Alzheimer's disease to make early detection. Okay, and uh, um, the some of our work, the research work actually is join the um, the uh, conduct with the um, the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney and also John Hopkins School of Medicine and Harvard Medical School, and this is the research particularly supported by the Australian government as the research grant and also NAMIC and NAC grant. So um, thank you very much.